Let's do a few more probability examples so we get a feel for how these work. For our first example, let's take a fair coin and let's flip it 12 times. What is the probability that exactly four of these flips result in tails? Here we'll finally see why counting arguments are so incredibly useful. Let's first determine how many outcomes are in our sample space. Since we're flipping a coin 12 times, we can think of this as 12 boxes that need to be filled. In each box, we can either put an H for heads or a T for tails. With two options for each box and 12 boxes total, the basic counting principle says there are two to the 12 possible outcomes. Great. Now we need to count how many ways there are of flipping exactly four tails. Note that we only have to specify the flips on which tails occurs because all other flips automatically have to be heads. To do this, let's keep track of the tails by writing them like one, two, three, four, which tells us that the tails occur on flips one, two, three, and four. This is represented by the following sequence of 12 coin flips. Okay, so with this notation, we note that repetitions are not allowed, right? One, one, two, two just doesn't make sense at all. Additionally, order also doesn't matter. 2, 4, 3, 1 gives exactly the same placement of tails as, uh, as 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, all of this combines to say that we can determine the number of places that four tails can occur by using a combination, and that there are 12 choose four ways of choosing where the tails goes. Since the coin is fair, the probability of four tails is just the quotient of the number of desired events by the total sample size and this works out to be about 12%. So that's an example where counting was critical. In the next example, we could do it by counting, but we'd need to be extra careful. Let's suppose that we roll a green d6 and a blue d6, and let's compute two different probabilities. The first is that the probability of either dice showing a value of five or more, and the second is the probability that the green dice shows exactly twice the value of the blue dice. Like I mentioned, we could do this using counting, but I'm going to use a table to do it. Let's let the top row indicate the role of the green dice, and the left column indicate the role of the blue dice. Let E be the first event, and let's count how many elements there are in E. I'm going to mark these off in the table using a red X. I start when the green dice is five or more, and then I move over to the blue dice here. And, okay, so we know there are 36 total possible outcomes, and again, that's just an application of the basic counting principle. And if we count the red X's, there are tw uh, 20 possible outcomes in our event space. Thus, the probability of the event E is 20 divided by 36, and that works out to about 56%. For the other event, let's write it down, let's indicate it by F, and I'm going to indicate it in the table by a black circle, and we're just finding where the green number is twice as much as the blue number. This happens exactly three times, so the probability of the event F is 3 over 36, which works out to about 8.3%. This shows us that sometimes it's easier to solve a problem by counting, and sometimes it's easier just to write all the outcomes down. 